Ladies and gentlemen, joining me on the line as he does every week on the show. He's from CinemaBlend.com. He is a true gentleman of the scholarly fashion. His name is Mike Reyes. Hey, Mike, what's going on? Oh, nothing. Just stuff in my face of peanuts. What's going on with you? Uh, you did say peanuts, right? Peanuts, yes. All Get right. your mind out of the gutter, Johnny. <clears throat> Just wanted to uh, make sure uh, Mike Reyes is joining me on the line. We've got a, a couple movies that we're going to be doing some time traveling. Uh, we are going to be talking about Ted here in a few minutes, as uh, you can tell that Mike is really into it. The two big movies out this week, ISS and Queen, uh, Rock Montreal. Uh, we, we haven't seen them just yet. We're going to do some time traveling. Just on the surface, one, the Queen thing is going to be cool in IMAX just because it's a Queen concert. It's hard so to be Queen, it. you know? Yeah, I am so damn excited because I remember having so much fun with Stop Making Sense in IMAX last year. And then a couple of weeks back... I didn't get, they did have a press screening, but I didn't get to go because it was in the city. And I, I don't even remember why. I was probably busy with something. A lot of writing stuff going on over here. And it's not as, it's not always, not always as easy to get to this, like yeah. New York to go see something because I got to get on the train. I got to pay for the train. Philly, it's so much easier because I just drive out. I'll pay for parking. Like that's an easier get for me. But like when I really need to, of course I'm going to New York. Uh, the other big movie out this weekend is called IS. I guess Founders Day is out. That's kind of a weird looking political thing, I guess. Weird looking, yeah, like a horror movie, kind of like a, from what I'm guessing, a purge sort of horror movie. But I have I don't really know much about it. Didn't get it. Uh, haven't heard any real details about how okay. or where it's being released. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, but ISS, this is, uh, it. we'll get to the review of it here in a little bit, but this is a really interesting concept that I legitimately have never thought about before they put up, you know, the trailer for this. It's like, oh, shit. what would you do if you're on ISS and the world went to war underneath you? Yeah, and there's a really interesting podcast that's out now <clears throat> called Sign Off. And it's basically the concept behind ISS is Russian and American astronauts are all on the ISS as war is breaking out between the two countries. Like yeah. massive war. Like if you watch the trailer, you see how big it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. what happened is they did, I think it's only it's only the two episodes that are up now. They're like 15 minutes apiece. It's the American and Russian news agencies talking about every, the events leading up to the movie as they happen. That's probably on like any just platform, right? Uh, yeah, like I found it on Spotify. It's a uh, LA Times to help produce it. Uh, this looks like true Twilight Zone, Outer Limits sort of stuff, and I, that's what makes me really excited about it. Hey, this. one more time. What was the name of the podcast? Uh, Sign Off. I'm looking it up right now. Yeah. It's like, re yeah. like I said, it's just a few episodes, very easy to bang out, and just oh, reminds cool. me of the Halo podcast that I would follow, that I would listen to that are like full-fledged audio dramas promoting like the games. <laughs> Mike Reyes from CinemaBlend.com on the line with me. So now I have something to listen to on the way home from work tonight. So we'll get to the uh, review of ISS here towards the end of this. A couple of reviews we can do uh, just because Mike was full-blown into the accent a little bit ago. He got into Ted. I We finished the uh, uh, we finished all the episodes the other night. I absolutely love it. Really, really I, well done by Peacock. I've only watched the first episode, but I really like it too. Like, I, I genuinely enjoyed getting back to this, and I revisited both movies the other day uh, because we were promoting... In the run up to the promotion of the show, I uh, we like to do story behind features. Yeah, where it's like, why did this happen or why did that happen? So I looked into the story behind why Mila Kunis wasn't in Ted Two, and because of that, I revisited Ted One and Two. And why wasn't she honestly, in the second one? Well, the short answer. The shorter answer is Seth MacFarlane and Mila Kunis have very different answers. Seth MacFarlane says it was because of how the movie evolved and it, it, how it involved her character. And she says it was because of pregnancy and you can read that full feature on cinema blend right now. All right, there you go. Uh, but we'll go back to the, just the series itself. I know you're only on the first episode, but man, like I, it, I was always ready for the next episode. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if, if honestly, I was, I was ready to keep watching like we, but obviously, you know, we, we, we were setting up to record the show today. So it's like, okay, I'm not going to get too deep in it, episode two, because he's probably going to call in a moment. <laughs> but I, it, it wasn't, an, it was not an unwelcome prospect. It was, it was like going, it was kind of like going back to, to friends in a sense. It's, it, well, yeah. 
it was like getting back into a franchise that you liked. And those two movies, while they may not hold up, there's still some of that. There's obviously still a lot of that DNA in here, but I feel like the way that they're working with it now feels better than it did with the movie. And that may be just it, because so much time has passed since both movies. It was very, like, a, as you'll go, it has very Family Guy moments. I mean, yeah, Seth MacFarlane, you know, Family Guy's his deal. But, like, just how they set up, like, the, 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 the whole thing almost works better as a sitcom, as how they're doing it. Oh, totally. And that's, that's I, I think he kind of realized that. And that's why, like, as movies, they were okay, but obviously this is sort of like reverse engineering yeah. where it's like, you, it's really hard to to stick the landing on TV and movies. It doesn't always work. Like Naked Gun is one of those cases I can think of where it absolutely worked. Or yeah. uh, Serenity and Firefly. But you know, especially with a sitcom, that's that's a tough needle to thread and it almost feels like putting it into a sort of back into a sitcom because it, it already felt like it was a sitcom in that movie. And now that streaming sort of removed the, the boundaries of what you can say and do, it's, it's like a, that's the sweet spot. Uh, the kid that they got playing, the young John character, uh, Max Burkholder, I believe is his name, he looks nothing like Mark Wahlberg. Sounds exactly like him, down to the pacing of how he and Ted interact. Oh, yeah. Oh, that that is without question. Like, uh, I don't know if I've seen him in anything before this, but he definitely just, you're not even questioning it for, for a second. You're not questioning it. That's the same Johnny. That's the same Ted. Yeah. And I was also really glad that they kept the theme. Yeah. I'm kind of sad that they shortened it down, but I, I like one of the th- random thoughts I had was, okay, they got to keep the theme from the first movie because that already sounded like perfect sitcom theme right down to, you know, Nora Jones just knocking it out of the park. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they did. It it just really, really well done. I really enjoyed it. It's also really interesting that I've seen a couple clips here and there on Facebook. Yeah. And the clips that I've seen, I really have enjoyed. Like, uh, there's a segment where Ted is negotiating with the principal, played by 24 in the Orville's Penny Johnson Gerald. They're negotiating over something, and he's like, I'll ask a question at Drug Assembly. I will even ask, who do I turn to when I feel like there is someone trying to offer me drugs? There's a couple really, really uh, fun interactions with people. And there's something that happens later. Again, I don't want to tell you too much because I don't want to spoil it. But I'm trying to figure out who the voice of somebody else is and who it is. I thought of something that would have been wonderful. And I'm sad that it will never happen. What's that? So you know how Norm MacDonald was on The Orville? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I would have loved them to have done an episode where there was another teddy bear that came to life and it was Norm MacDonald. And the two of them are just like <laughs> riffing and like talking about life and stuff. And like they're so different, but yet so alike. Oh, funny you say that. I kind of, you know, the moment you mentioned the voice, like a voice, it's like, oh, it's going to be something like that. But I just, I, again, I don't want to spoil anything for you. It's just there's some <laughs> really there's some really fun interactions in this show. Uh, the mom is totally hilarious. Fun. Uh, the, oh, yeah. the dad has some very heartfelt stuff in it later on, which was a lot of fun. Uh, but overall, I, I really enjoyed the show. I, I really did. If I'm completely honest with you, I'm probably going to flip it back on once we're done here. There you like, go. Mike Reyes from CinemaBlend.com on the line with me right now talking uh, about Ted. Uh, what are the other series? And I Did we get a talk about Echo last week? I feel like we I talked about we it, but I don't know if we finished it. <laughs> Did we? Thought we did. I don't know if we finished the conversation. To make a long story short, pretty good overall. the The last episode was wanting. Like it just kind of wrapped up. You know, it was like ah, we, we kind of don't really know what to, we want to do. Here you go. Here's an ending. Because I I, yeah. I asked my wife. My wife watched it with uh, with me, and I was like, "Did you get it?" She got, and she kind of sputtered out some stuff, and I'm like, "Okay, I guess." I don't know. Overall, it wasn't awful. It, it uh, as far as Marvel TV shows go, I, I didn't mind it. I I actually enjoyed a lot of it. Although now that you mention Marvel, it is rather interesting that there's reports coming out that apparently Tatiana Maslany says that uh, She Hulk Attorney at Law will not be coming back. Oh damn! Because I think she said it's like too expensive to make at this point. I guess too expensive for what their <clears throat> what ratings they're getting and such. What did they say? It was like twenty five million an episode. I thought I heard that too, and it's like. A lot of the, and of course that was around the time that we were 
getting that they got that huge article about oh there's so much crunch going on behind the scenes and marvel's in crisis and... yeah they're not being a she hulk season two doesn't bother me a whole lot i'm not gonna lie although at least we already know that what if season three's happened yeah yeah just nope. waiting for it to arrive there was uh, uh bah, 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 bah. i was trying to think you know the animation style uh that they used for marvel what if yeah i was thinking about it oh my god what it was, I, I feel like it was a Dragon Ball Z thing. I was like, man, what if they made a Dragon Ball Z movie using that animation style? I think it would be really weird because. And, oh, no, because no, 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 no. It wasn't Ball, Dragon Ball Z. It wasn't Dragon Ball Z. It was uh, uh, Star Wars, a Star Wars what if series. That would be interesting. Although that, that is something that is apparently being rumored right now. There are rumors floating around that Star Wars is potentially doing a what if series. What made me think of it, and again, it goes back to the world of TikTok and all that, but it's people that they, they put together these AI generated images, but then they attach a story to it. And it's like, you know, what if, uh, you know, uh, Anakin never turned to the dark side or, you know, something like that. And I just, I was thinking about, I was like, man, that'd be a cool what if series of each week you get, you know, something like that. It really, it could be interesting if you do it right. Yeah. And that does remind, that, go on. Oh, I was just going to say, it, it, it's definitely one of those things that you can't, you'd really have to plan it out. Yeah. But, you know, it has worked for Marvel and, you know, it just, it's. The key is to not just shove it into a round peg, a square yeah. hole, a square peg into a round hole, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I completely get you. But anyways, uh, Mike Reyes from CinemaBlend.com. Uh, that's kind of echo. Uh, one other thing really quick, and just because uh, it, it proves how much of a dumbass I am. Oh. So the other night I uh, got, had a couple hours, and uh, the youngest kid wasn't there, but um, the other one was downstairs. I just I had TV time, right? I'm flipping through, yeah. and on Netflix, Filthy Ri or Jeffrey Epstein, Filthy Rich popped up on Netflix on like the top ten. Yeah, I started watching it because I legitimately thought it was a brand new series. Turns out they released it in 2020. <laughs> oh yeah, I think I remember watching that one too. And and that was really when it all started to when it all really started to kick off. Much well, like Epstein and Bryant. you've had all the stuff you know in the news lately that some of the names from the list are coming out. You've got, uh, you know, the feud between uh, Jimmy Kimmel and Aaron Rodgers out there. And uh, I thought, oh, maybe this is something they just, you know, timed, released it. You know, I watched it and it, it was a really, really interesting. It was a hard watch. It was interesting, but it was hard to watch. Oh, oh, yeah. Like, I think I think this is exactly the special that my wife and I watched when it uh, it first dropped, which I think was around the same time he did. You know what? You know what part of it they never uh, uh, they never really addressed, and I wanted an answer to what in the first episode they're talking about. It was when they first started put the uh, Palm Springs police started putting together the uh, case that they were going to go get him right. Yeah, and they showed up at his place to do the search warrant, and uh, long story short, he'd been tipped off. A lot of the computers were out of the house. A lot of you know there there wasn't as much evidence there as what they wanted. Right. Yeah. They never addressed who could have possibly tipped him off huh. or at least or if they did, I missed it. But it was one of those. Wow. I wonder who uh, it had to be somebody, you know, obviously working the case or something. But because well, yeah, he had, he had the, the thing that people have to remember. And this especially goes this especially pertains to the flight logs, because as much of a deal as everybody loves to make of, oh, Bill Clinton was on those logs and Stephen Hawking was on those logs like. I'm not excusing anybody out of potential crimes and think that it should be, you know, investigated to the fullest extent of the law. There should be real investigative follow-up. <clears throat> but a thing that they, they really have to remember is Epstein was so well-connected with a lot of the hoi polloi that, like, people were just visiting him for, for other deals. Like, it wasn't all yeah. the kids' stuff. I mean, obviously, that is not some, I am not downplaying those yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. downplaying the actual accusations and the actual events in any way shape or form it's just that again like like with any of this there needs to be more investigation and more proof before we really start laying it on to people I would I would like to see them do a like a 
a follow-up series with this. Oh, indeed, because there's the whole uh, Ghislaine Maxwell yeah. angle now because she's still kicking around and she's still going through the system. <laughs> yeah, so anyways, I, I caught that on Netflix. If you're into that sort of thing, uh, as in, you know, the true crime and, you know, political and type stuff. And it didn't feel stuff. sensationalized. No. From it, what it, I remember of that series, it did not feel sensationalized. I think that was the one where uh, James Patterson was involved with the, the miniseries. Yeah. So Cause it was like, yeah, everybody kind of knew this. It was an open secret, but there were angles and aspects that stopped anything from happening. So, yeah, I, I double recommendation here. There you go. Mike Reyes from CinemaBlend.com on the line with me right now as we make our way through. Uh, just a couple things uh, to uh, wrap up before we get to uh, our actual reviews for this week. Uh, there's a Mean Girls controversy out there that uh, dropped this past weekend. You finally saw it, right? Or is it two weeks old? I forget. I saw it last week. Okay. I, I'm i all off on my uh, days of the week at the moment. I'm sorry. Dude, we're still settling into January. It's expected. I bet people are still writing 2023 on their checks right now. It's okay. I am not judging anyone for it because I remember back in school, I would do the same damn thing on tests. It's like, wait, what year is it again? All right. So, Mean Girls, what's yeah. the controversy here? Uh, so, the, the, what's really funny is uh, I, uh, there's a feature that I'm really proud of on, in, on a, not Instagram, on, on the site where one of my editors and I came up with the idea. It's like, oh, well, why don't we have someone come up with like all of the references to the original Mean Girls and it's, you know, stuff surrounding it. It's like, okay, there was a reference I picked up on. And when we were in the, the discussion phase, he's like, uh, that might be a bit of a stretch. We don't really know if that was what they were referencing. Well, I'm starting to think maybe it was because what happens is in one of the TikTok segments, Megan Thee Stallion makes a cameo. Spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen the new Mean Girls musical. Yeah, it's a musical, despite what they're selling it as. And she says something like, as she's commenting on someone's fashion. She's like, oh, yeah, this is old school Y2K fire crotch. Let's go. <laughs> so if anybody remembers tabloid culture from back at, around that time, Lindsay Lohan acquired that nickname from one of Paris Hilton's friends, if I remember correctly. It was not something it, it, it was it was tasteless and it uh apparently that reference has not only from what i understand Lindsay lohan certainly wasn't happy about it i wouldn't be if i was her but apparently her father's also really mad about it too did her father a dirtbag i thought i heard that but i'll refrain from comment because i don't really know or i don't remember at least uh there's so many of those stories. And yeah, that's uh, uh, that's why I asked because it's like uh, her and Brittany and all the you yeah, know. It's like, it, oh, you care now. You yeah, care now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, what exactly. you're saying. I, I get you. Okay, so that's a big deal. I'm surprised. Yeah. I'm surprised if she was going to have a cameo in the movie that they would that, that they the, wouldn't have like talked to her about that. Well, even talk to her about it or. Uh, someone goes, you know what? Uh, let's not do that joke. Uh, let's leave that one out. Well, I'm wondering if it was like improv yeah. and like th that it wasn't or, scripted because Megan Thee Stallion herself was a cameo. So like, I'm wondering if they just were like, do your thing, Megan. And then I don't know. Yeah. But you would think edit, like I was going to say, maybe they did it before they knew Lindsay was going to be in it. But then you're also you have to edit the movie at some point, so that really doesn't make sense. Yeah, but if 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 they uh, I don't remember the total story about how they landed the cameo, but if they knew very late in the game, there's only so much you can do with that. Although, fun fact about Lindsay Lohan's cameo, she actually got like I think it was half a million to do that scene. What? And then, it was a, she's Lindsay Lohan. It's Mean Girls. Of course you're going to pay her to do that. Just, oh. That's worth it. Ah. That's worth it. Especially, you, ah. especially because you, you got to make that, you know what, if they could have gotten anyone else, because they tried to get uh, Rachel McAdams, because apparently she and Tina Fey were talking about potential cameos for her and it just didn't work out. You pay them what they're worth. They're the OG Mean Girls. You pay, if any of them were going to come back, you would pay them that much. Ah, I just want money. That's what it comes yeah, I was down say, to. You're, you're really getting worked up over this this uh, this money here. It's 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 more. I just want money, Johnny. 
Yeah. Just, oh, no, now I don't. I damn it. I don't know which direction to go in because on one hand you mentioned Johnny and I want to go Ted, but then the voice you did sounded more like Norm Macdonald. Like, you know, I want money, Johnny. You know, it's a, the, the the cheddar, the biscuit. Hey, you, know, you know, it's a it's a it's a fork Gotta in go. the road. It's a you know, a lot of choices. It's a retirement fund. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little nest egg. You know, I want to go to Pensacola. So, all right. Well, was there uh, was there anything else with Mean Girls, or was that kind of it? Uh, that was it with Mean Girls. Although I will. Uh, before we go, I do want to give a quick book shout out. So okay. I, I don't know if there was anything else you had in mind besides Mean Girls. No, we were going to say something about Wonka being the most popular or uh, most money making Wonka movie, but that's not hard to believe. So oh no, and also just the fact that you look at things like inflation and like just how much movie tickets cost now. I don't understand why people don't do more adjusting for inflation. Because it's like, oh, yeah, this is the highest grossing thing in the franchise. Like, it just eclipsed uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory from 2005. Yeah. It's like, that's cool, but the dollar in 2005 didn't make as much as it does now. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm not surprised that it's a, it's a movie that has been popular and has had legs. Yeah. All right. So uh, what's your book recommendation, Mike Reyes? So I read Opposable Thumbs, How Siskel and Ebert Changed Movies Forever by Matt Singer. Uh, he is a fellow entertainment journalist. And it is a an excellent read if you want to get in on the ground floor of Siskel and Ebert history. Because it talks about how these two men went from competing and absolutely hating each other's guts to becoming the critical duo from it was like the late 60s they recorded their first pilot which was apparently a disaster oh boy. and then from the 70s on just building their empires switching homes uh getting better deals from it and then gradually becoming better friends because of everything they did they are a very interesting couple guys you know there is also oh my, so one of the stories in here that really impressed me they talked about how their first variant of the show i think it was like oh man i forget the name of the title but it was their first pbs show like they were they were on public broadcasting in the beginning then they went to syndication then they went to syndication under disney but back in like the 60s and 70s they had to have people go to the theater they had to take they had to note like if there were certain scenes they wanted to put into their broadcast because that was one of the the things that helped make siskel and ebert famous was like they pulled clips and showed clips and then d discussed the movies that they were the movies that were out that week based on those clips. That was a very dark age <laughs> when it comes to like like right now, if you wanted to watch a clip from Mean Girls, you could pull it from YouTube or pull it from a trailer. Yeah, they had to take note of what real, what time in the movie that happened, what time it happened, and on what real, and then they would have to get the film go to that point and like scan that footage in so they could use it for a televised broadcast. And not everybody played ball. It's such a different time. Now you have any, any YouTuber can may, you know, do uh, what Sis Cisco and Ebert had to actually put work into, you know? Yeah. I mean, Roger Ebert being the first film reviewer to ever get a Pulitzer prize. That's just, it's, it's staggering. And just to look at, the climate that that just the climate that there was when the show was made and why other attempts didn't work is very interesting and it's also just it's exciting to look at how everything changed but yet these it, it, while the business changed so much those two men still had so much cachet right up to the end yeah that that show lasted and i it, it's a fantastic read it's very quick and I highly recommend it. It's uh, that's Opposable Thumbs by Matt Singer, uh, available wherever you get your fine books. Uh, and now I've moved on to reading Argyle because I'm ready to dive into that mind puzzler. Argyle, Argyle. I know the name of why. Why do I know the name of that? That's the Henry Cavill, Bryce Dallas Howard yeah, movie okay, about okay. the. Yeah, and there the, it is. the book. And I'm just going to tell everyone <clears> the book is not based on the movie. No, the really. Book was supposedly the well. The book was supposedly the inspiration for the movie. Wow. And the whole story that Matthew Vaughn is told. He's the director, also the director of the Kingsman movies and uh, Kick Ass. So the story he tells is during the pan, the beginning of the pandemic, he found the manuscript for Argyle, 
loved it so much and that he and a writer sort of crafted a narrative around it inspired by that book. No one has seen Ellie Conway, the woman who wrote this book. No one knows what she really looks like because even on her Instagram, you see her holding things. And it's just like her hands, her nails, like you have never seen her face. Twist one, Bryce Dallas Howard is playing a character named Ellie Conway in Argyle. Twist two, the trailer does not say based on Argyle by Ellie uh, Ellie Conway or based on whatever. Twist three, people are going into conspiracy theories where some think it's a Taylor Swift project, some think it's a J.K. Rowling project. Oh, boy. So there's all this secrecy and all this mystery, and apparently twist four or five, I don't remember which twist I'm on, the trailer apparently only shows footage from the first 20 minutes, I want to say. Yeah, I remember we talked about this at some point, right? Yeah. So there's all of the secrecy that's mounting and now this book is on shelves and it's the first book in the series because as you see in the trailer, there's like four published and she's working on the fifth, I believe. Ah, nice. So this is going to be a Netflix thing at some point. A Netflix thing. How? Uh, like a behind the scenes. Oh, potentially. Yeah. I so. mean, I know it's, uh, it's, it was originally just going to go to Apple TV plus, yeah. but then universal made a deal and was like, let's put this in theaters. No, I and was thinking like, more of the conspiracy yeah. side of things. So, Oh yeah, no, I would, I wouldn't be surprised if they've already cut something that sort of dives into that. And it's like going to be like a supplemental feature on the disc, but also whatever the movie reveals is probably going to be something that the press tour really digs into. And it's, it's going to be fun to see where all this shakes out and what the truth is. There you go. Mike Reyes from CinemaBlend.com joins me every week to talk about movies. Uh, Coming up, we'll do some time travel, and we'll get you a couple reviews before we're done for this week. Indeed. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, time travel complete, and guess what? I have more winter weather than I'm staring at right now. Mike Reyes from CinemaBlend.com is on the line with me. There's no blizzard. I can actually make it to work this time. But, uh, Mike, since last we talked, you watched more Ted. Real, real quick, what did you think of Ted? I'm only two episodes in, and I think the second episode is really where it sticks, the <laughs> formula, because there's there's always this, this is something I've actually been going through while watching The Sopranos right now, because yeah. the wife and I just started that up, and there's always those episodes where you feel the formula clicking, you feel everything sort of locking in, and you can just zoom from that point and just enjoy, and I think Ted's second episode is where it locks in for me. Oh, that's awesome. No, it is so, so good. But anyways, uh, Mike Reyes from CinemaBlend.com on the line with me right now. Here uh, is where we kind of dive into the world of the reviews for this week. ISS is the big one out this week. What do we think? You finally saw it. Yeah, it's uh, it's really good. Really? It is, oh, yeah. I think this is uh, – watching the trailer for this, the whole ba- the basic concept is – the whole thing takes place on the, I- the International Space Station, the ISS, and a crew of Russian and American astronauts are stationed there as World War III looks like it's broken out on the surface. <laughs> like, and I, I mean, we're talking, uh, this is all in, in the trailer. I mean, it, honestly, if you do want to see, if you haven't seen the trailer and you want to go in without the trailer, I fully condone that and recommend it. But this is... Uh, Nuclear bomb flashes and everybody on the station is scared. It's kind of World War III breaking out. Oh, wow. But then again, you probably know this if you listen to the podcast that we suggested for you earlier in the episode. I need to uh, I need to jump on that. I have not had a chance to uh, listen to that just yet, uh, but it looks so cool. This is I think it's about, it was an hour and a half. Yeah, it's or, a like, quick hour one. Thirty five. It is, this is a successor to Twilight Zone and, and Outer Limits stuff. I, I, I believe this is as good as, like, those shows. Oh, cool. Because it's just, it's that cautionary tale about cooperation among people and what tense situations like these can do and how would you react. And it's just a great understated, well, not understated, but it's a great pressure cooker. Ariana DeBose is, is our functional lead here as sort of the new person on the ISS, while other veteran astronauts are sort of weighing in the pros and cons of what, they, what they're supposed to do versus what they feel they should do. And it's, it's engrossing. It just locks you in. 
like it's kind of like a mix between gravity and fail safe and oh, wow. that's like a that's a sweet spot for me that's awesome uh mike reyes from cinemablend.com on the line with me right now as we talk about iss where can you find that is that theaters or download or or watch at home uh let me double check because i know iss will be in theatrical release but i'm not sure if it's one of those things where it's also going to be on demand because that seems to be something that a lot of yeah uh, that, that not a lot of but more films seem to be taking advantage of that now than ever before uh opening this week in theaters oh cool mike reyes from cinemablend.com on the line uh, kind of in the world of movies, but more so video games, as I am an avid video game player. Uh, Mike pointed out that the trailer for Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, uh, some of the gameplay was released earlier today, as in Thursday the 18th. And um, I, I don't want to, I liked it. I, I don't, I, I'm not completely sold on it. I'm not going to lie. I liked it. I got giddy about it, but then there were a couple things that are holding me back as well. But for now, let's just start with the fact that this is a midquel that takes place in 1937. So this is right at this is after Raiders of the Lost Ark, but before Last Crusade. Yep. Uh, Marcus Brody is still alive, so if, if that didn't tip you off, that's that's where this takes place. And it looks like Indy's fighting the Nazis again and a villain slash henchman played by Tony Todd, Candyman himself. What took me out of it was like, uh, it's obvious, it's not Harrison Ford voicing it, right? No, I don't think. If, if it the, is, then that is the most disinterested he sound, sounded since the Blade Runner voiceover. It's a decent, that's. It's it not Harrison a bad Ford. voiceover. I, that, I was going to no, say, it's not. it's not a bad voiceover. But just the 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 gameplay looks interesting because there, it looks like they're going to have different you know like puzzles and shooting and adventure type stuff. I mean, it looks like there's going to be a lot of different things to do in the game. My my problem with it was this is from the same folks that do uh, Fallout. Uh, let's see, they did uh, Elder Scrolls. Two titles that came to mind when I when I realized that this game is supposed to be coming out this year, which is only three years since they were they announced that this game was happening. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Fallout seventy six and Starfield. Yeah, this. There are just to release those games, and they were buggy as hell. There are just moments in the trailer where it goes from looking like a really good video game to, that's a really crazy that's a video game you know what i'm saying and i get that this is this is early things can still yeah. change and things can still develop but i am worried because you have a james bond game that was announced by another developer in 2020 mm -hmm. and we are not anywhere near a trailer or a release date like they're still saying it might be a couple years off meanwhile indie was announced in 2021 and now it's already like being released this year i'm i'm kind of worried but also it still looks exciting and better than dial of destiny so i i don't know where to land here i listen i hope it's good it's got like almost like a first person shooter type thing but you're using the whip which is kind of funny it looks like it's got some puzzle thing like my worry about it is is it gonna try and be a lot of different things and not do any of them really well you know what i'm saying yeah yeah, and that's when you when you make a game like this, that's always one of the uh, the greatest sort of puzzles to figure out in itself. It's like, is there are there too many puzzle sequences? Are there too many shootouts? Are there too many cutscenes? But it doesn't like like you're gonna have to worry about it too much because, uh, or at least for the meantime, because it looks like this is an Xbox Series X slash yeah. S release and. The only other platform is PC gaming on Steam. Yeah. Uh, probably because Bethesda is owned by Microsoft and all their stuff now goes to Game Pass. I, I, I'm I a PlayStation guy, so I won't be playing it. I'm not rich yeah, enough to get an Xbox, so. Oh, Xbox isn't that much, isn't that much more expensive than a PlayStation. But yeah, I made my choice, man. I made my choice. Even, even past that point, it'll probably get released there eventually. Yeah. I don't know. It just, the only word I can kind of say at, at points, it just looked clunky. Yeah. But again, this is, this is I, early, I know. like early gameplay. So it could change from now. I mean, 
who knows how much it could change between now and release. We don't even know when it's technically being released. You know what, though? I'll tell you this much. I'm hoping the story's really good because it seems like with some of these movies, when the uh, a side game comes out, the the story in the side game has been better than some of the movies. And uh, th- there's a few of them out there, but the only one that's coming to mind right off the top of my head is the uh, Jedi Survivor game. Ah, uh. that 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 storyline is way better than anything we've gotten on the screen in a while. You know, although uh, looking at what's going on is uh, just going back to the boys, Troy Baker from The Last of Us, the man who played Joel, mm-hmm. is uh, our new Indiana Jones. Oh, cool. So no, I, it, it looks cool. I'm sure Indiana Jones fans will uh, be all about it. So we'll see what happens with it. Mike Reyes from CinemaBlend.com joins me every week on the show to talk about movies. Uh, Mike, we'll uh, go from there, and you have yourself a wonderful weekend. Enjoy Queen tonight. Yeah, you have a good weekend, too, because it looks like we're both uh, getting a couple more feet of snow. Uh, we're in the middle of uh, a snowstorm right now, and it was one of those ones where they they're like, ah, oh, we might get like one to three inches of snow or whatever, but all of a sudden, as the afternoon has progressed, it's gone from like, oh, it's it's starting to snow to, oh, the cars are covered now. Oh, uh, the streets are awful. And we're oh, just gonna... there's mastodons walking down the street now. Oh, look at that, a mammoth. Cool. So yeah, uh, look at that, the ice age again. Uh, uh, you know, oh, uh, you know. Uh, we're all gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope you have a good weekend with snow trouble at all. Uh, <laughs>